Hi, 7th graders. Um, unfortunately, this is going to be a longer video today. I'm going to try my best to get through it and keep it around 15 minutes long. Uh, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of information on what we're about to cover today. Um, we're going to be talking about triangles, and triangles have something really, really cool about them. They have all these rules and laws that they have to follow. Um, and you think, like, they're the simplest shape. Why do they have so many rules? But they're, the rules help create them and construct them. So we're talking about construction of triangles um, but it also will help us just like our proofs of the angles find other angle measures or find um, missing triangle side lengths because of these rules and that's so that's kind of cool and really helpful so we're going to explore that today we're going to do one of the iReady videos I know how much you love them and one of your classmates just adores their voices um, but I think you won't be able to hear their voices uh, you'll only be able to hear mine so I'm going to talk over them a little bit I apologize if I stop talking randomly it's because they're talking and I'm getting confused. I should probably just mute them. Why don't I just mute them? That would be smart, right? Yeah. Duh. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off with the fact that triangles have a specific rule when it comes to their side lengths. And the rule is, well, we're going to find out. They asked us here, can we build a triangle with the side lengths of 2 inches, 2 inches, and a base of 6 inches? And they're asking, is this going to build a triangle? Well, right now, looking at it, it looks like I'm missing a side length to make a rectangle. Um, if I try to move these sides in to get them to connect to make a triangle, we learn pretty quickly they don't. It doesn't make a triangle. So that means that I need to have specific side lengths in order to make a triangle. So are these three side lengths ever going to make a triangle? No. So what do you think the stipulation has to be then? Well... We think, I think we both can agree that, we all can agree, that the two inches is too short. If I've got a bottom of six, two inches is too short. So I need longer sides there to get them to connect to make a triangle. So now we're going to have three different examples. Um, and I'm going to try to move these to connect them to see if I can build these into triangles. Well, these aren't touching. The only way that I can get four inches and five inches to connect if the base is nine is if it's a straight line because four plus five equals nine, right? So that's not going to make a triangle. It's going to make a line. Um, if I try this one, four and five, they get close, but mm, with a base of nine inches, it's not going to happen. But with a base of eight inches, if I move these in, hey! This one worked. Now, why did the 4, 8, and 5 work, but not the 4, 10, 5, or 4, 9, 5? Why did the base of 8 work for 4 and 5, but not 9 and 10? Well, could it have something to do with the two short sides? So here it's saying the sum. And so we kind of get a hint that it has something to do with the sum. Well, 4 plus 5 is 9. 4 plus 5 is is 9 all the way down. Here it's 8, here it's 10, and here it's 9. When 4 plus 5 is 9 and the base is 9, they're equal to each other, but that didn't make a triangle, so they can't be equal. 4 plus 5 is 9, the base is 10, so when the sides were less than that base, it didn't make it. So that means the sum of the two shorter sides always have to be greater than the biggest side. Okay, if I have one side of like 27 and the other two sides are like 2 and 3, the 2 and the 3 are never going to be able to touch each other because 27 is so huge. The two little mini sides can't touch. So that means the two shorter sides, when added together, have to be greater than the other side. Okay? So we're just going to skip through them talking. So now we're wondering, well, okay, let's say I have these fixed sides, and I'm wondering how many triangles can I make with these fixed sides? So 5, 4, and 8. And we remember when we pulled them in, they connected kind of close down here like that, right? Okay, so that's one triangle we can make with those side lengths. Let's see if we can make any other ones. So I'll try to pull down here, I'll try to pull down here. Oh, well, I just made the same exact one. And they're not going to touch any other way. So they make the same one every single time. Now notice up here they abbreviate this SSS. SSS means all three sides, side, side, side. 
And that's going to be a rule that we're going to need in a little bit. But it turns out that there's only one way to make this triangle with these three side links. So every single time I try to make a triangle, if it has these three side links, regardless of what the angle measures are, it's always going to make the same exact triangle. They're always going to be congruent with each other. So now they're wondering, what about if I have two of the same side lengths, but the third one I get to pick? So this one I get to pick. I get to pick how long it is, where it goes, everything. Well, let me just move this here and get them to connect. There's one, um, two, three, seven, 84, 96, 580, 12. Are you figuring it out? If I've got an unknown side length, I can make an infinite number of triangles, okay? They're all gonna be different from each other. None of them are gonna be congruent with each other. So I can make infinite number when I only have two side lengths. So that's important for us because when I'm trying to make two triangles congruent, I know I need more than just two side lengths to make them congruent. Here's an example. I've got two side lengths, but now they're giving me the angle measure between those two side lengths. They're saying, well, you've got 10 and 12 again, but you can't move 10. 10 stuck. Okay, this angle here is stuck. Well, I got this side length that I can do whatever I want with again. Um, I connect him here, but I, I can't move him. He's stuck. He's stuck. The only thing I can move is that guy. And I just, I make the same triangle every time. So if I've got a side, an angle, and a side, side, angle, side, S-A-S, there's only one way that I can make that triangle. And it's going to be congruent every single time, and it's going to be the same triangle every single time. So this one's a tricky one. This one's here to trick us. I've got a side length, I've got a side length, and then I have an angle measure. And notice that the angle measure is not in between the two side lengths. So that means that I get to move this angle, but I don't get to make him taller and shorter. I just get to move his angle measure down here. This side length, I get to change the side length, but I don't get to change the angle measure. So I can get them to connect here. That's one way that they connect. But I also know, if I drag him down here, that they connect down here too. There's two ways, which is difficult because when proving congruency between two triangles, determining two triangles are the same, if I'm given a side, a side, and then an angle measure that's not in between those two sides, it's not enough to determine if the two triangles are congruent because we can see here that that side, side, angle, SSA, can make two completely different triangles that aren't congruent. So that's there to trick us. A little confusing. Okay, so now they're talking about what if we just have angle measures? Just angle measures, not side lengths, just angle measures. Um, and notice that they take those angle measures and they put them together in a triangle here for us. I know I can make at least one triangle. Um, but then I can change it, right? I just change the side lengths of all three sides. And it just so happens that the angle measures are still the same. I can make them really, really tiny. I can make them really, really big. I can play around with them. So I can make infinite numbers. But notice that with this little guy and this big guy, they have the same general shape, right? They're still an obtuse triangle. They're still general shape, just different sizes. So I can make infinite number of triangles with angle, 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 A, A, A. But they're not going to be congruent. They're going to be similar. Similar because they look the same, they have the same general shape, and the sides are proportional to each other, but they're not the same shape, small and big, right? So they look the same, but they're different sizes. So look the same, different sizes, that makes them similar, not congruent. Even though it says up here congruent angles, it's not congruent um, shapes, not congruent triangles. Okay. Oh, they're talking. I don't know what they're talking about because I muted them. Oh, okay. Angle, side, angle. So now they gave me an angle, they gave me a side length, and they gave me another angle. So I can change the uh, side lengths here. These aren't determined. It's just that this angle has to be the same, this angle has to be the same, and this side length has to be the same. And it looks like I'm going to have to go out here to get them to connect to each other. And I think I'm going to get... Oh, I need this guy. Right there. Perfect. 
I don't know why I didn't make a dot, but whatever. So I get them to connect there. But that was the only place that they were going to connect. So angle, side, angle, A, S, A, will make only one triangle. If I have an angle measure, a side length, and an angle measure, I'm only going to make one triangle, and I'll make the same triangle every single time. Every time. So that means that this is another way that we can prove congruency. There's only one way that I can make a triangle with those measurements given. Um, so these are all going to be used in your activity that you're going to do in a little bit to prove congruency between triangles using side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. If you have two angles and a side and the, um, and the two angles that they don't share, how many different angles can you make? So now I've got angle, angle, side. So this guy I can change. This length here I can change, and they're wondering how many I can make. Well, let's see if I just bring them in nice and close. Boop. There he is. And that's the only way we can do this one, too. So angle, angle, side. That's another way to prove congruency between triangles. Angle, angle, side. So we've had a lot of these weird abbreviations here to determine if triangles are congruent. Side, 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 all sides are the same. Angle, side, angle, um, that one worked. Um, side, angle, side, and angle, angle, side. It's the only one that didn't work with side, side, angle, or just side, side. Notice if I've just got two sides that are the same, I could make infinite many triangles. But if all three are the same, there's only one triangle I can make. Then we've got... Oh, we know that the two shorter sides have to be greater than the greatest side. Two shorter side add up have to be greater than the greatest side. That's important when you're trying to build a triangle. So side, side, side. Side, angle, side, which is when I had a side length, an angle measure, and then a side length. Okay. Angle, side length, angle and angle, angle, side. These are the three ways to prove triangle congruency. If I have one triangle with all three sides and another triangle with all three sides and they're the same, I know the triangles are congruent. If I have one triangle that has a side length, an angle measure, and a side length that's equal to this other triangle's side length, angle measure, side length, then regardless of what the other side lengths are, these two are congruent. They're going to be the same. Um, because there's only one way that you can build a triangle with those conditions, and we just did that here, okay? Um, angle, angle, angle um, is one that you can make congruent as similar triangles, and then this one is the one that is here to trick us, side, side, angle. Notice, if you are to reverse that around, it spells a naughty word. Uh, that's how you know it's there to trick you, okay? If they ever try to use side-side angle to prove that two things are triangle, they're there to trick you. They're there to make a uh, angle side-side out of you. That's some math humor for you. Uh, so this one is not there to prove congruency. You'll actually be able to make triangles with those. Um, and then finally, angle, angle, angle is to prove that two things are similar. So uh, triangles can be similar with all three same angles, but they're not going to be congruent. So you can make infinite number of triangles with the same angle measures, and they'll be similar to other ones with the same angle measures, but they won't be congruent. Okay, so that's all I got for you guys today. I, uh, I hope that made sense. I'm going to give you some more notes on this in a little bit, um, but these are all there to help you prove congruency with triangles, which I think is really cool and kind of fun. Um, and I hope you have a little bit of fun with it, too. So um, I will uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.